everyone! Today I'm going to be building a pink bongo cat themed keyboard featuring a frosted layered acrylic case in the color blush. I purchased it from Awesome Keyboards. I saw this case in green being shared by the creator and I fell in love with the adorable bongo cat peeking out over the top of the keyboard. This case was designed for the ID80 V2 Hot Swap PCB that I bought from Ido Bao, which features a 75% layout and white backlighting. To begin the build, I put down my rose pink American Haptics work mat. I removed the PCB from the plastic packaging and plugged it in so that I could make sure everything was working correctly. I brought out my pink fine tip tweezers and went along the back of the PCB, touching the tips to each hot swap socket. I always do this before a build in case I need to obtain a replacement PCB. Everything is good to go, so I unplugged it and brought out my stabilizers. For this build, I'm using Duroc V2 stabilizers sent to me from Agile. Agile is a new company I'm working with, and they're an online shop that sells keyboard accessories. They specialize in keeping items in stock and restocking them with a fast turnaround. I'll leave a link to the shop in the description below, and you can use my code MOCHI for 5% off your order on agileshop.co. These stabilizers are already pre-clipped, so my focus will be on lubing the housings and stems. I'll be using Crytox 205G0 and a Kinetic Labs palette with a double zero brush from Agile. Like all my builds lately, I'll be lubing the wires with my grease syringe kit later on, so I went ahead and fully assembled each one with the wires as I went. Duroc V2 stabs don't come with any extra modification options, so I grabbed these stabilizer pads from another stabilizer kit I had extra parts for. I added them to help dampen the sound of the stems hitting the PCB when the key is pressed. Now that the pads are done, it's time to finally install the stabs. I opened up the washers and screws, then brought out my wow stick precision screwdriver. I did find these stabilizers a little difficult to line up with the holes because the PCB was a little too thick for the clips on the back of the housings, but I was able to successfully install them. Here's how everything looks so far. It's now time to lube the wires, so I added a few switches that I'll be using for this build to each stabilizer for fine tuning. Then I grabbed my stabilizer grease syringe kit from the Keydot company. You can check out this kit by visiting the link in the description below, and don't forget that you can get 5% off by using my code MOCHI. After applying the grease, I added a few spare keycaps to see how they felt. At this point, it'll be really easy for me to fine tune them if needed. Next, I'll be kneading the plate from the case so that I can add my switches to the build. I used my wow stick again to remove the top screws from the standoffs holding the case together. I put everything to the side except for the plate. This case does not come with gasket strips or plate foam, but I was recommended by Awesome Keyboards to use a clear double-sided tape like this. It's two millimeters thick and I just cut a thin strip off of the roll and leave the clear film in place. I only need it to be sticky on one side. I want to add the tape to help fill in the space between the plate and PCB so that when I add switches, the plate doesn't flex and will remain sturdy. I usually would add plate foam, but this is a nice alternative since it's clear and the right thickness. I added them to the back of the plate where I needed support the most, taking the time to test it out with the PCB a few times to see if I needed to add more. After adding strips along the inside horizontally and a bit on the sides, I was finished and ready for switches. For this pink build, I'm going with Strawberry Milk Tactile Switches purchased from Dane Keebs. I'll leave a link below if you want to check these out. These are really cool because they offer both tactile and linear versions of them, and they come in a really cute milk bottle. These are manufactured by Texi and feature nylon housings, a long pole palm stem, and gold plated springs. They come unlubed, so I used Tribosis 3203 and added Duroc films. To start, I added six switches to the corners and edges, then placed it onto the PCB to line everything up. After the switches were inserted and secure, I added the rest of the switches. I can tell the tape did a good job supporting the plate, and I love that you can't really see it through the acrylic at all. To make sure no pins are bent, I plugged in the PCB one more time and pressed each switch while checking the results on a keyboard checker. Since everything looks good, I'll now be assembling the layers of the case. I used my wow stick one more time to add back the screws and close everything up. My first impression of this keyboard so far after reassembling the case with the completed PCB 
is that it feels a lot heavier and sturdier than I initially expected for this keyboard build. I love how the switches look with the case, as well as the gold wires from the Duroc stabilizers. I'm really excited to add the keycaps, but first I wanted to add the rubber feet that came with the case. These just stick on like most standard adhesive rubber feet. Before I add my keycaps, I took away the silicone work mat and brought out my Bongo Cap Artisan keycap that I commissioned from Tulip Clay. This keycap perfectly captures the cuteness of Bongo Cat and looks perfect as my escape key for this build. For the main keycaps, I'm going with the World Tour Tokyo OSA keycap set that Akko Gear sent me. I have a 60% keyboard from them featuring this keycap set, and it's honestly one of my favorite keycap sets out there. I love the pink and blue color scheme, and the novelties are really nice too. It was a little hard to find a pink set that matched with this case color, but I felt that they matched pretty well. These keycaps are dye sublimated PBT and feature Japanese legends. I'm really happy that this set now includes a 2U right shift key, which I definitely needed for this keyboard layout. Unfortunately, I overlooked the larger keycap size needed for the control and alt keys on the right, which this keycap set does not support. I may use this keyboard to feature other keycap sets in the future, but for now, I decided to fix this issue by using blue keycaps that happen to match well from another Akko keycap set. They aren't the same profile and don't 100% match, but I think it's pretty good for a quick fix. For the home and delete keys, I decided to add two Tobin Artisan keycaps in pink and blue sent to me from Zomo Plus. They go nicely with the bongo cap theme and match the colors of the keycaps as well. To match the added blue keycaps on the bottom row, I decided to also remove the pink F5 through F8 keys and replace them with matching blue ones from the other Akko set. After finishing the keycaps, I'm really happy with how everything looks, especially the Artisan keycaps. I'm going to plug it in with my pink coiled cable from Personal Loot to check out the backlighting. I think the white backlight looks amazing with the layered acrylic and I love how it shines through the toe bean artisans. I've been working on gathering different parts for the keyboard for several months, mostly because it's taken me forever to finally pick out the switches and keycaps I wanted for this build. I can definitely say I'm satisfied with the choices I made and it's been absolutely worth it to wait so long. Overall, I'm quite happy with the results. As I mentioned earlier, this keyboard case is from Awesome Keyboards, and I think this creator did a great job designing it. If you've had experience building keyboards and are interested in working on something like this, you won't have a problem sourcing all the parts needed and building the keyboard. However, if you are new to this hobby, I just want to note that since this case is from an independent artist, it doesn't come with the things you need to finish it. For example, you'll also need to purchase a PCB, stabilizers, switches, keycaps, and any other materials you may want to use. I'll leave a link to everything from this build down below, so please check it out if you feel that it'll help you. As for the sound profile and the feel of this keyboard, I'm glad I made the choice of using tactile switches as it feels really satisfying to type on and gives it a poppier sound profile on this keyboard. I'm also really happy with the Duroc Sabs from Agile. I'll have a sound test as usual at the end of the video if you want to hear. This keyboard was so fun to build and I also had a blast shooting photos of it. It's definitely going to be one of my favorite keyboards and will make an excellent addition to my collection. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have more builds coming up very soon including a 40% keyboard build so you definitely won't want to miss out. Thanks for watching!